May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be free from harm. May all beings love life. May all beings awaken. Welcome to another Cuke Audio podcast. I'm D.C. Pubov Cuke Audio and Cuke Archives. Doing our bit to help preserve the legacy of Shindu Suzuki and those whose paths cross his. And anything else that comes to mind. I pray that you and yours are safe and comfortable, free from economic hardship and able to get out and do whatever it is you want, while considering the universal precept of do as little harm as possible. So today we have a guest, Susan Ross. And uh, here I'll let you know how I came upon Susan Ross. She sent me a... a, a, uh, a message through, um, you know, the guy I, I work with, Peter Ford, he forwarded it to me. Maybe it was from the blog or something like that. But anyway, it says, sent from my iPhone, old dog Buddhist reporting in. Please call me. I'm very tech impaired, but endeavor to share blessings of our mutual journeying before we go. I live in Mexico in semi-retreat now, but I'm easy to reach. My intention is to be of benefit, having been blessed by our teachers. May all beings be so blessed. And as the phone number and her name, Susan Ross, still rolling for now. And so I got back in touch. I didn't ask her what she wanted to talk about. I didn't know the name, and so I did the following podcast talk. And, uh, well, I'll just tell you a few things. She came out of Ohio, and uh, she went to Woodstock in a Volkswagen bus with some other people, and that was great. And, uh, you know, she ended up in New Mexico in Taos and Santa Fe. She's an artist. And she went to Smith, and uh, uh, she did graduate work in Amherst, uh, I think. Uh, uh, Anyway, University of Massachusetts. Anyway, she says. And uh, so uh, she ended up working on Be Here Now as an illustrator. Uh, mm. And then she starts dropping names and, you know, saying people she knew. And, wow, I knew those people. Uh, And so it was pretty cool. Uh, It takes her uh, to be, through being a student of Trungpa Rinpoche, uh, to um, uh, coming with uh, Gary Snyder and David Padua, dear old friend David Padua, may he rest in peace, uh, to uh, Suzuki Roshi Chunyu, Suzuki's funeral. That's as close as she got there. She said, but she was um, already uh, quite, uh, enamored with him because of having read uh, Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind. Uh, and uh, so anyway, we we have a nice talk, and uh, here it is after we've had our pause to meditate. So when you hear the bell, if you have such a mind, hit pause and meditate or whatever for as long as you wish. And when you're ready, to come back, hit unpause, and we'll be here to hit the bell to end the meditation or whatever, and we'll give Susan Ross a call. Hola. Hola. Que tal? Amazing. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a very technical person, but I made it happen. 
Well, you know how to answer a phone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, so uh, hey, Susan, so uh, uh, what's your story? Okay. Um, let's see. Where where I start? Um, I went out to Colorado after I graduated from Smith College uh, in 1969, and uh, I ended up having... Um, I've, <laughs> my life has been very fascinating because of... I've just... I've been, I'm an artist, and I've definitely... Um, what would I say? I love adventure. And so I had gone out to Colorado with my dad after he had given me a VW van for my college graduation. We'd gone to Woodstock in, in it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Not my dad, but me. And uh, I had met a bunch of people from New Mexico and uh, Lisa Law and a bunch of people. And it was, you know what I mean? It just... Uh, I have sort of fallen into interesting places without sort of being the girl from Ohio, but just sort of enjoying yeah. my adventures. <laughs> yeah. That way. How so, was Woodstock? But, uh, Woodstock was incredible because I, I had was just I had just graduated from college. I had gone to uh, thinking back to uh, to uh, Amherst to I, I was at Smith and I was, but I ended up doing illustrations at, at University of Massachusetts, and then I made was making so little money that uh, I went in and I said, "Well, these friends of mine want to go to this concert, and uh, can I have have the uh, the weekend or, or the the rest of the week?" And they, and uh, they said, "Well, yeah, you, I guess." I mean, they were paying me almost nothing, and uh, that turned out. Uh, they they wanted to go, but I had this wonderful VW van, and they had a motorcycle. So they said, let's let's all go, and we'll just go down there and camp. And so we did. But I mean, get it, going to Woodstock was fascinating because, of course, Woodstock was not Woodstock until you got there. But but Joni Baez was going to be there, and I was getting, I was very excited about you know going. And, and so we're driving across the fields in upstate New York, and we had bought a bushel of peaches, and we were going to go try to find this place, you know, and we're out on this road in the middle of nowhere, and of course, I was in Ohio, and it was just, just like a farm road, and I was driving down this road, and all of a sudden, I looked back, and I'm sort of going, why are there all these cars behind me? I don't understand what's going on. I mean, it was fire or something, and and I ended up driving off into this field, and uh, literally, I mean, it was, it was like iconic. Uh, we pull into this field, and we think we we're sort of must be someplace near it, wherever this farm is that we're supposed to be trying to find. And uh, literally, a uh, big meadow and uh, and some tents up at sort of the top of the meadow. And I said, well, we'll just sort of go over there and see if we can find a place to, you know, find out if those people are people that for or this know anything about this concert. Well, as as we were doing that, basically, Wavy Gravy jumped out of the woods saying, welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. And and uh, and we had gone on thir- Thursday or Wednesday, I think. it was. We had, we had taken those days that I wasn't going to get paid anyway, and it was like... Um, you know, and we said, well, yeah, yeah, well, okay, we're here. We, we thought we were going to camp out, and so we wanted to go into town and get some groceries. He goes, oh, no, no, just go up the hill, go to that tent, and, and we're going to make food for everybody, and you guys can just help out. And so <laughs> we did. Yeah. <laughs> so I met a whole bunch of people that way, and, of course, uh, they were – you know, pranksters and stuff, and then they were, and so we went out to California. Wait, wait, um, wait! Tell me about the music. What did you hear? The, oh well, uh, Jimi Hendrix and Johnny Baez. And, All right, wait. How was Jimi Hendrix? Incredible, incredible. In fact, I had, I mean, there had been this woman at, at 
Smith, who who was uh, had had gone out with Jimi Hendrix, and so I sort of knew who he was. But I mean, mm-hmm. I had never heard his music like live like that. So that was pretty amazing. I mean, I think I think Woodstock was the only concert I'd ever been to. You know, that kind of thing. I mean, I, it was totally. I had no idea what, what what it was going to be like. But I mean, literally, you you couldn't. I mean, I ended up camping right on the edge of the woods, where I could see the stage and and still sort of be able to be out of the out of the worst of the rain and stuff but the bottom line was is you you really were just there you know you were absolutely there and 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 it, there was no way of not i mean it was just incredible in terms of of i mean i ran into people actually in the woods who had who i knew from new york who were up there like selling t-shirts and stuff um I don't know what's happened to my Woodstock T-shirt now. It's around someplace, <laughs> but um, you know, <laughs> because this friend of mine had been making T-shirts, and and so I'd gotten this T-shirt, and I realized that I think I don't know. I don't know if it's, I still have, I don't have it anymore because I moved to Mexico and I had to leave a lot of things behind. <laughs> uh huh. I don't know if my daughter-in-law sold it or not, but uh, who but else did you hear? Yeah, um, well, it, it was, let me see, I'd have to start, I'd have to really put some thought to it, because, I mean, it was like a constant thing. I mean, it was just, and of course, a lot of the people I had never heard before, yeah. so that was always, always, that was fascinating, too. So, I mean, it was like, it wasn't like I, I was a, 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 you know, died in the wool uh, concert goer at that point, and so it was, but, I mean... I mean, I was already, I mean, I was a Joan Baez person. Because I wanted to go to March on Washington, and my, my, the pastor of my church was going to go to the March on Washington, and my parents wouldn't let me. And so, I mean, I was already sort of in that world, but it wasn't, it, it was in an interesting kind of way. Mm. I was a young girl from Ohio, mm. off to see the world. All right. And, uh, so, so that that sort of got got me started, and then I um, I, I had gone back to Ohio, and uh, I I was I said that I was going to go drive out to New Mexico. My dad said, "Well, okay, I want to go." I you know he had just given me this VW van, and he said, "Why don't we go out?" And I can I I love you know he, he was a fisherman, he loved to fish, and I said, "Okay, let's go," and so we. Drove across the country in the bus and got to New Mexico, and um, got up in the in the in the mountains, and it literally, I mean that's sort of how it started, and it just that's it's been the way my life has gone since then. It's sort of like not really knowing why I was going to a particular place, but on the other hand, once I get there, it's sort of like, yep, okay, I love New Mexico. It's like right away, and and of course, I was an artist. Um, I had, I had, at Smith, I had studied under Leonard Baskin and a bunch of people, and it, it was like, I was, you know, I was, it was like Taos, and it was like, oh, Taos, I'm an, you know, I'm an artist, and, and George O'Keefe lives up the hill, and I was like, <laughs> You know, and maybe mm. I'll just hang out here for a while, and and I did. <laughs> and I mean, it, it's just the stories just keep rolling through like that. And I mean, that's I, I, I'm giving him really slow little tiny bits, but but you know, my life was just uh, the idea of well, and of course I'd, I'd studied at Smith. I'd I'd, I'd taken. Um, uh, religious studies, and 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 so I, I was I was a beginning Buddhist at the same time, right? Mm-hmm. And I I didn't even I hadn't really had an opportunity to practice, but a couple of my professors at Smith were Buddhists, and so I sort of you know got drawn by the idea that that there were people around that you could meet like that, and I was I'm trying to remember how I got to Taos. I mean, I just I just went to Taos, and, and um, that ended up with Dennis Hopper inviting me to stay at his house for a while, and that was interesting. But yeah, <laughs> but then I, but then I ended up going up the hill, 
because I, I went into the, the uh, post office one day and um, after I'd been in Taos for a while, and uh, this guy comes up to me and he says, hey, hey, you're, you're an artist. You're, you're an illustrator and an artist too, right? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, I have this friend who's coming back from India and he wants to do an illustrated book. And, it, and, and he's going to come up to where I live up on, on the mountain and we're, 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 we're going to all get together and we're going to make this book together. And you want to, you want to do that? And I, and I said, sure, why not? <laughs> right. And of course, that turned out to be Ram Dass coming back from India. And, yeah, who was uh, the person that came up to you? Oh, Steve Durkee. Oh my uh, God! Well, he's the yeah. he's the founder of Lama. Did Did you right, know uh, right. J- Jonathan Altman? Oh yeah, Jonathan. I mean, to see that was that was the thing is when they. I mean, Jonathan wasn't up living up there, but I mean, Jonathan was in the valley, and I mean, it was like, you know, it was. I was just another artist, you know, Taos artist, but I, but it was, I was totally open to whatever was going on. And, and, uh, and, and so I moved up to Lama. I ended up, uh, because I was right out of college and, and I mean, Barbara and, and Steve and everybody, I mean, they were all sophisticated New York artists and I was, you know, fresh out of Smith and, and it was sort of very interesting because it was an interesting mixture of people. But that led, of course, it, pretty close, well, very close to um, the fact that I, I almost, I did a, a Suzaki Roshi came and did a, a Shishin there. What, and, I mean, uh, I, you I, mean I at, at Lama? At Lama. And, you know, it was definitely just um, one thing after another that was was popping into my life. And it was like, and then little Joe Gomez from oh, the yeah. Pablo. Yeah. Uh, Grandpa Joe, I mean, I, ha- I have a picture of Grandpa Joe that has sort of gone into, out into the world. But, I mean, I've never, I've never played on any of this stuff because I've always just been an artist. And, so, yeah. you know, I mean, it's. Um, it's, been, yeah. it, it's, it's totally different. I mean, I thank God, because I mean, I, I will say that, that, you know, people like David, David Padua, for instance. Oh, I yeah. Mean, I lived with David for a while. Wow. And, uh, David was not an easy person to live with, frankly. Oh, sure. And, um, <laughs> but, you know, I know yeah, everybody yeah. you're talking about. I knew Dennis exactly, Hopper there. You know, I met little right. Joe. Uh, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was very and, close and so, with David Padua uh, right up until he died. Um, God, well, that's what caught me, and that's why I decided to call you. I thought it's interesting because I, you know, I, I have been the person who sort of, uh, sort of, I sort of like, uh, you know, I had no idea just walking off into the world and and going through all these adventures and not really realizing sort of what what was connected to what but that they but the the connections were all so amazing i mean i mean from little joe was my first teacher really i mm. mean he was my 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 definitely my first teacher i ate a lot of peyote and 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 worked on the book and and you know and it was it was quite an amazing way to get out of college you know yeah did you know uh, those, did you know uh, fran keller and tracy mccallum uh, they those names sound close, but well, they, they were, were in the no, peyote not. church there. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. So that right. that was Little Joe's, right? Right, right. Well, yeah. I mean, there was Little Joe, Frankie, and there was a bunch of people. I mean, yeah, people. I, 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 I know they were into the peyote church there, you know, for years. But right, right, uh, and hmm, well. Well, I mean, I mean, I can just keep going. You'll, you'll you do I keep mean, going, we'll but you, know, you haven't we'll mentioned the book. The... You haven't mentioned what book you worked on. Oh, be here now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, talk yeah. about it. Let's hear about it. Uh, oh, okay. Well, be here now. As I say, I got up to Lama, and I had my BW bus, and uh, and they put me in the A frame, and. And we, you know, we, we'd have meetings every morning about 
we were working on doing Adobe. We built the dome and, you know, I mean, there was a lot going on. There was a garden. Um, uh, oh man. I mean, this is, I mean, you just know all these people, uh, like we built a, a greenhouse into the hill and I'm trying to remember, um, in my friend of my dad, the architect in, in, down in, in, uh, Albuquerque, but, uh, and it's escaping me right now, but, but, uh, you know, but my, my dad was real interested in like Bucky Fuller and stuff. And so uh-huh. he, 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 and he had a friend and this, and I'm trying to remember his name, but he's down at Albuquerque. Yeah. I think he's still around, but he was a, a Bucky Fuller person too. But I mean, everything was just popping right then. Put it Are that you way. talking about Steve and, Bear? And Steve Bear. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Steve Bear. And so, and Steve was a friend of my dad's. And so, I mean, it, it was an interesting world because it was like my dad was, you know, and, and my dad and mom were, were, were Ohioans. I mean, but my dad was, they were both kind of people. I mean, I, I look back and say, my God, I, how did I ever get these parents? Because these parents were just, they let me, you know, I had, I still have really good relationship with my college my first lover my college boyfriend is uh, you know and i remember my mom he was at dartmouth and and we had gone up there on the drive home back from them coming to visit me and and i ran into the dorm to go get david my my friend and my mom sort of going oh you're allowed to go into the dorm <laughs> right <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> Yep. <laughs> so, so, but then, but I had a, uh, I literally, I, I uh, had a little, my dad had a little a VW bug. And so I ended up driving that out to Seattle to see David. And then that led, and this will go off into the woods where you won't know some of the names because it's, oh, you'll know them from a distance. I mean, like, uh, my, my college boyfriend David from it was at Dartmouth, but his he had a half, well, sort of a semi half brother, who was a um, Klingit Indian, who had um, a wild man friend of Jimi Hendrix, you know, early drug person, but um, he was he was taken in by David's parents, and so. They, uh, Greg, this was right during the war, right? Uh, and and he was eligible for the draft. And uh, we decided that we were, by that time, we were, we were lovers and hanging out together. And he was going to go to Canada. And I took him to Canada. And... <laughs> And I, I will never forget this. I mean, we got to the border, and and Greg said, "Well, here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to distract them from making me, you know, produce credentials or something." And so he wore a kilt. I mean, he's this big, tall, lanky uh, Indian, <laughs> you know, Klingon Indian, but he's wearing a kilt. And and I think they just didn't know what to make make of it. But he ended up living up there. And I went up and stayed with him for a while, and, and but um, eventually he came back to the states. And but he then he had been with, but he had been in San Francisco with Owsley, right? So I mean, we definitely were in the in the era of of that, and it was just that's how the, the world works, you know. Sometimes it's just like I had no idea when I I mean when I'm telling and shooting these all these these memories out there they're just like okay this has been an interesting life and i mean i didn't plan any of this really you know Mm. (laughs) as far as i can tell but that said by that time i was definitely um practicing i was you know i was doing i was doing practice but it was definitely uh i still was you know an artist from taos and and then I'm walking up the road. I'm living in, in Santa Fe. I'm, I'm, I'm living up. Uh, well, I mean, I had moved in with David. Padua. But, yeah, David. You mean and, in the house uh, that, that Joan Halifax lives in now? Yeah, yeah. 
And yeah. that was that, yes, that Richard was Baker be. had between right. them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sarah Gordo. So, so I had been in, in the reason I had, I, I mean, I was trying to remember exactly what the circumstance was because I think basically what I was trying to do is go back. I wanted to go to Santa Fe to do, to work, to do art. And, and, uh, I think David sort of just conned me into, you know, coming and staying with him. But, but, um, then, I mean, I, and, and I did. And I mean, and, but he was still in, in definitely in New York mode. And, and, you know, he, he had a daughter and, and, uh, uh, ex-wife and a lot going on. And it was, a you know, you mean the daughters I, from, I, uh, Sweden. I don't know where she lives now. I have no idea. He had two daughters she in was, Sweden. Well, maybe one of yeah. them was stepdaughter. I, I, I forget. Uh, listen, did he yeah. have the Chorten? Were you around when he had the Chorten? You know, like the well, stupa there? Well, the Chorten there? comes into it now. We're getting close to the Chorten. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because beside the house, they, there was a corral, right? And, and, um, David got a horse and had a horse in there and he was going to give me this horse. And, um, but by that time, I had sort of decided that I was getting a little tired of hanging out with older guys because, well, and Stuart Brand had come along too. That's an interesting one. I mean, and, and I was definitely a, a free thinker. I mean, I, I went with who I wanted and, and, you know, they, you know, if their adventure made me, uh, want to, be with them, but but they were mostly older men that were had a lot of money too, and I was like, which was not really of great interest to me. It was fascinating. I mean, I still look back and go, well, why were they really interested in me? And I, don't, I have no idea, except except I was such a free spirit, I guess. And I and I, I did. I looked. I I cruised through some of your your, uh, I guess your reels or something, but. I, I love a Bali. It looks like a really wonderful place to hang out. I've, I've never been there, but that, that was beautiful. So I can imagine. Well, I don't. I'm 77 now. I don't know if, uh, the dog. I got a dog that's that's about to die, and I and I think she. I mean, I told her she's been my mom's service dog for a long time, and my not mine now. And I said, you know. I'll see you out. So I'm probably I'm going to be in Mexico. I don't know. She's 15 now, so who knows? We'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, that's the thing is I came down here. Um, it was definitely. I mean, oh, well. I mean, David, we're going. I mean, I, the story just keeps going. I mean, I'll tell you, my my life. Is, it's yeah, keep going. Like keep you. going, but I want details. Okay. I want details. I want to know well, about. Well, that's the thing. You, well, that we're going to have to have more, you know, a beer to kill. Well, we'll see. Thing. We'll <laughs> see. But, but, uh, but, okay. So, see where were we? Oh, the Chorten. Okay. Yeah. So he gives me this horse, and the horse is in the corral, and and then and I I think by that time I'm sort of going, eh. And because, I mean, I'm trying to remember how exactly I moved up the road, uh, up up the road, a ways, up further up the canyon in, in the Saragota, and and I had a little house. And then I think Richard Baker came to see David, and all this, David was entertaining people all the time, and he was, there were always people coming in and going. But but I was no longer hanging out on a regular basis, but, but I did, I mean, uh, uh, Alan Watts, I mean, I have a nice picture of Alan with, uh, with a Hopi, uh, a Hopi implement uh, that, you know, I mean, we hung out together and, and then, and then, uh, I mean, Bhagwan Das came, I mean, it was like, but it was interesting because, I mean, I was sort of making space between me and him. And so, it was fascinating to sort of watch it from a little bit from afar. But on the other hand, uh, people kept coming up the road. And, and for me, one person who came up the road, it was very interesting because I was walking down the road one day and this guy is walking up the road and it, he looks 
I mean, he looks like a Navajo, basically. I mean, he's got a string tie on, a bolo tie, and he's got jeans on, and he's, he's you know, he, he's got these black glasses, and it, it, it looks like a cowboy, basically. And I'm getting closer and closer to him, and then I realize, and this, this goes into a trip that I sort of have to go back to, to connect it, because with David, I had gone out when... Suzuki Roshi died, we were at Gary Snyder's house. And Gary said, well, I'm going down to Page Street uh, for the funeral. Do you want to go? Well, interestingly enough, I mean, by that time, I had met uh, Trump or Rinpoche. I'm trying to remember which order this is now. Because the guy coming up the road was not a Navajo. It was Trenka Rinpoche, who, of course, he loved dressing up. And so he looked just like a Navajo cowboy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and But, I mean, it was, to me, I knew who he was then, and it was like, holy shit, man, this guy is really amazing. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and, so, and so I think I had, I mean, I'm trying to remember when that happened, and I think it happened after I had met him, because he came to Lama at some point, and I had heard him talk, and I thought, you know, he's he's the genuine article. I mean, I, I really was very rough on people. I was like, I wanted to know if they were the genuine article or not. That was my, the main thing. And if, and, and frankly, I mean, people like David were fine, except there were much more I mean, there were people I had a lot more interest in than David in in that sense. But, but um, he's a pretty interesting but, guy. <laughs> well, he is too. I mean, yeah. And he, but, but he definitely had an edge to them him that, that was different than than what I was hunting for. Because I, had, oh yeah, I he was heavy. He was heavy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and 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 Greg, my my. Lover Greg was, I mean, was the wild man. I mean, he was, I mean, I was going to end up basically living in the wilderness in Canada after I took him in Canada. You know, I mean, it was like, so, I mean, I, I the older guys, I, I, they were attra attracted to me. I was more interested in, in the, the adventure, <laughs> put it that yeah. way. Yeah. And, and so, but I mean, I'm trying to, I mean, it, it's, I, ha I need to make a ta timeline because I mean it's it's like starts to con conglomerate, but but because um, Greg had gone up, he had gone to I had taken him to Canada. He was in Canada. I had gone back to, to uh, Smith to do some uh, etchings, I think, and then when I came back out, I, I think I ended up maybe in Aspen. I'm no, I had. No, that was before I even got out of school. I was I went for a summer in Aspen, and so I knew a lot of people in Aspen, and and so um, I was just being drawn to Colorado, even though David was up in in Seattle, but uh, and and Greg was in Canada, but but I was in, in but I kept ending up down uh, along along the Rockies, basically, and um, and so I mean. Oh man, it's. I, I mean, it's so jam packed. I can't. I can't. Well, tell us about. Let's let's stick to one thing. Tell us about the Chorton. The Chorton. Okay, so the Chorton. Uh, what? Okay, this is horses in the corral. I'm I'm saying to David, no, I think I'm I'm just going to head out for a while, and so David and, and I break up. Not that we were totally together to start with, but but. Um, and, and the the piece of land that was the the pasture and the horse, he decided he he was going to uh, take that down. And I think I don't know exactly when the idea formed for the Chorton, but by that time I was a student of Trenka Rinpoche, and I had gone up to Boulder, and David had. Had built the Chorton, and uh, well, the Chorton. Would you say it's just like a stupa 
It's, it was a small yeah, stupa. It is. It is it's a small stupa. Yeah. Yeah. yeah small stupa. And and and. And, I and well, let, let me add that yeah. uh, I have, you know, I've spent time at the Jordan when when uh, I was in Santa Fe for a year with my uh, beloved uh, former wife and right. infant Clay. Uh, we we did the um, Wednesday evening uh, Zazen there every week oh. for a year oh. over there. Uh, Jonathan oh. Altman, I, I knew the Jordan. I've been there. David had shown it to me right. earlier. Right. But right. Jonathan was uh, Altman was on the board, and he took me there, and it was important to him with people. So I said, okay, right. we'll we'll do a Zazen one night a week here. And, uh, and Russell Smith was... I believe at that time was living in it because there's a nice living unit and there's a wall all around it and there's a room for a, a, a nice little zendo. It's really well, see, and I've never been into the, the I've never been inside that because I had come down when the Chorton got dedicated and because Rinpoche, my Rinpoche, came down. And danced around that stupa, and I took pictures of it. And Rick Fields, who was a poet, that you know, we had all started Naropa together. Basically, Rick up in Boulder. Rick Fields. Rick. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So you knew Rick. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. So so, but Rick, Rick um, you know, Rick died. But but yeah, he he we were artists. See so at all these artists at, at Naropa, right? We started with Naropa. And, I mean, uh, David, I have hours of stories that you would like. Yeah, so yeah, sure, way, sure. I mean, we'll just stick you, to you know, the we're, Jordan. We're doing the highlights. So, but the Jordan, I have a, a photo. Now, I don't know where or if anybody has hopefully put these aside and have them, but there, I did these, Rick did these, and I did these broadsides that were very funky broadsides, but but um, there's a picture of Rinpoche that I took of Rinpoche dancing around the short, and then Rick has a, When a you poem say there. Rinpoche there, which Rinpoche? Chokim Trumpa Rinpoche. Okay. Who was, who was my main teacher. Because yeah, that was, but he's not the one that, that built the he, short. No, 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 no. He, but he, but he, he was, I guess David probably invited him to come down to yeah. dedicate the short. So, oh, and so well, I, was, was I Dujum involved with the Chorton? I think he was. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember. I, I'm pretty sure it's on cube.com. You know, I have a yeah, yeah. ton about I'd David Podwa on it, and he talks about right. that. Uh, right. And I know I'm, David considered Dujum his teacher, uh, right. so that's yeah. probably it. Right. Yeah. So. But I mean, it, but it was it was cool for me because by that time I didn't have any big thing with David. But I, it was it was cool that that at least my my piece of land that I was supposed to have was had a shorten on it. You know, it was sort of cool. All right. I didn't get around to building it, but he did, and that's good. Somebody did. Mm. <laughs> so so, but but it is it is interesting because it because that connection. It went back and forth for many years. I mean, because I, I moved up to um, Boulder, and as I say, we started, I mean, Naropa. I mean, it was fascinating because, I, I mean, okay, there's a few other people that you know. Okay, because, and I don't remember exactly when I met Stuart Brand, but Stuart Brand was a friend of Jack Leffler's and David's and a few other people. I mean, you know, people hang out. And they were all... Was Jack Leffler the guy that lived on the other side of the Jordan? Yeah. He he lived on the other side of the road up on the hillside. But he's right there, right by the Jordan, right? Right by the... Yeah, right by the Jordan, right across from my old house. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. Yeah. 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 And so... And so... I could have been a really rich woman, actually, because, I mean, I was here, I was a Smith girl, and David sends me off to New York because they've gotten wind of these Curtis prints, these Curtis prints that um, of Indians, and they're all in this basement of this uh, bookstore in Boston. And so he sends me off 
to go and look at these prints and buy these prints, which I did. And he and he, he literally put them all in a in a, a car and brought them back down to New York. And he he put them in auction and it started the whole Curtis print thing. But I got paid in a few prints, you know. And it's like and it was like okay, whatever, you know. <laughs> Fascinating. So I've never I've never made a thing of all of this because, you know. I was sort of too busy, I think, on doing the next part of it, maybe, you know? mm. <laughs> because because I was practicing a lot, and I went to seminary, and you know, it was like um, my whole my whole life has sort of gone around my my Buddhist practice, but my Buddhist practice has been very eclectic in that sense. Because, but that said, I. Um, Stuart Brand called me and said, well, I'm going to Nova Scotia for to go hiking, and I think you should come with me. And I said, well, fine. And so I went off to Nova Scotia, and, it's, and I'm trying to remember when this was. Um, I was living, I think, in Santa Fe at that point, but I, I think it, I just sort of ran into him, and he wanted me to do that. And so um, so we met, and we went and hiked the the whole top of Cape Breton and it was incredibly beautiful but he was on the hunt and I was not particularly excited about that and so it was interesting because he had this cabin and he hadn't told me about this cabin and all of a sudden oh we can go to my cabin and I go okay fine and then turns out that this cabin I find out later is on a piece of land that was right next to the uh, the retreat center that drunk for Rinpoche built. This is this is over on on, on uh, Halifax. This is when Rinpoche had moved to Yeah, yeah, this yeah. And yeah. yeah. And so um and so I mean it was interesting because I was you know very interested in in Buddhism at that point and and uh it, I don't know how this happened. I mean, I was at that cabin with Stuart, and he was trying to persuade me to stay longer. And I'm sort of going, "No, I think I, I need to go." And I and I and I go get on a plane, and I changed my ticket. I thought, you know what? I'm instead of going back to Santa Fe, I, I, and I'm trying to remember why I wanted to. Go. Well, well, I think by that time I wanted to meet Trungpa Rinpoche, and he I, he was in Boulder. And I thought, you know, I'm just going to put, make change my ticket to to to, to uh, Denver, and I'm going to go talk to him because I think I want to practice. And so I had this very sort of, I mean, I it, interesting. I mean, I, so I get into the airport in Denver, and I had a, a number that a friend had given me in Santa Fe. To, because she was part of the community and but she wasn't around and so I called and I and I called this number and they said oh this, the, you know you might be able to get a hold of people here and then I get on and I'm with Franny Lewis who was Rinpoche's secretary at that point at Kermazong and uh, I said, uh, she said, yeah, you know, I mean, she didn't know who I was or anything. And I said, yeah, well, I'm here, I'm here to see Trump for Rinpoche. I just, I just got in from Denver and I'd love to come up and visit. And she says, okay, fine, I'll send a car. And I thought, hmm, okay, great, sounds good, <laughs> you know. And so literally, I get up to Karmazong, where I'm, you know, I'm just a new kid on the block. And she comes out and she goes, oh, well, you know, Rinpoche, I said I want to want to set up a meeting with Rinpoche because I want to become his student. And she said, oh, well, he's going up to the land, and uh, you could just go up with him if you want. And I so I said, yeah, okay, fine. So I get in the car with, with Rinpoche, and it's like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm, it's like fascinating. And so we get up there, and... um I remember there were rainbows coming over the draw to come into the, the, the land, and I'm sort of going, it, it was just, you know, I mean, 
display. Uh, I mean, a, a total. Uh, I mean, well, I mean, I'd already experienced this with with other Buddhists, but I mean, the, Rinpoche just you know could make rainbows happen or make rain, and I mean, a lot of my teachers have been able to do those kinds of things, and it was like okay, and so I ended up. Um, uh, Rinpoche was going to go over the tent and give a talk, and I was going to—I didn't know what I was going to do. I had my—I had my camping stuff because Stuart and I had been camping, and so um, this this woman from Santa Fe who I knew was up to cooking for Rinpoche, and I so I said, "Well, you know, I'd love to meet him." And she goes, "Well, why don't you put your tent up in back of the red trailer?" Where, where wait a minute! Was, wait a minute! You where, said you'd love to meet him. You just rode with him there. That's right, but I didn't. I didn't feel it was proper to, to, to you know. I mean, to say, "Hey," I mean, I, I didn't. I, I was totally in total like awe. You know what I mean? It was like, okay, it was like because. Here's the genuine article. I mean, I'm all of a sudden, I'm this, you know, hippie, trippy artist, and now I'm with the guy who I think is pretty much the guy who knows a lot about what I want to know, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we didn't have a lot of conversation in the car, but we get there, and, and as I say, he goes off and to do, uh, you know, to get settled in and, and and I'm trying to remember her name I can't remember her name but she was a very sweet woman and she was cooking for him up behind the trailer and she said well just put your tent up the up the hill and what I'll do is I'll come up in the morning and I'll you know uh, and then rip it, and I'll I'll have breakfast for Rinpoche and then you guys can have tea together and, and just talk and so I said that sounds great you know and so I literally, I mean, I mean, and this is when I'm still totally full, hugely full of ego. I mean, it's like, I'm just like thrilled. But on the other hand, it's like, um, I have lots of questions for him. It's like, you know, and I'm, 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 because I, I was sort of testing him. I, I mean, I, I said, I had, I had a question that I wanted to ask him because I thought like, well, I want to see how he answers this question. I mean, that that's the kind of person I was at that point. And so I said to him, do you think little Joe Gomez, which I knew he'd met little Joe because he'd come down to Lama. I said, do you think little Joe Gom Gomez has realization? And he said, yes, absolutely. And I thought, okay, you, you're in. <laughs> right? uh, uh, he called, he <laughs> called little Joe one of the two sane people he'd met. In America, yeah, Suzuki Roshi yeah. and Little Joe. Yeah, yeah. Well, I never got to meet Suzuki Roshi, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Because I mean, well, I I went to Page Street with David and Gary Snyder to the funeral, right? Uh -huh. But as I say, that was before that was before obviously this happened. I mean, when I when I went to, because I in Boulder, because I mean it was like uh, that that was. Part of the reason I went to, to Boulder was that I had gone to the funeral, and and I had met Rinpoche at the funeral. Ah, and I don't. And you remember what he went up and 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 basically was was. I mean, when I saw him and Suzuki Roshi there together, that was a pretty strong moment too, right? <laughs> yeah. What do you remember about it? Uh, the, the the connection was so so strong you know it was i mean i i didn't know that much about dharma but i knew that these guys knew what they were doing and and they they were people that i was blessed to be with you know <laughs> was you mean suzuki roshi's corpse and, and right. Trumpa's live body, and you could feel exactly. the connection between them. I could feel the connection, absolutely. Do you remember it anything that Trumpa did or said or anything? I think he sort of 
bent over, and I think he was sort of whispering to him, as I recall. I don't remember exactly. But I remember, I mean, I remember he looked very young. I mean, it was totally different than the moment when I'd seen him in Santa Fe. It, 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 he was like, he had a, well, uh, I think a sort of mustard colored jacket or something. It was very elegant, but very, you know, interesting. And, 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 and he, and I felt he really, I mean, I, by that time, I, because I, I had done, um, Suzaki Roshi had come up and done a, a sashin at, in, at Lama, so I had a little bit of practice under my belt, and so, but I'd never practiced, uh, done, you know, specific Zen practice except for that. But I mean, of course, Roshi was already clearly somebody I knew was the genu- genuine article. I mean, I don't, I don't know how I ascertained that, but I did. I mean, yeah, maybe it was just because people, you know, I don't know. Nobody told me that, but I mean, I do remember reading some in beginner's mind, but it was like, I don't know that that was what I, I was trying to remember exactly. Mm-hmm. I think it was the moment though that when they when they met together, one of them being in the body and one not. It was really, uh, 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 well, Richard yeah. Jay, you know. Uh, he put a uh, one of these white scarfs over the coffin. Right, uh, right. What are they right. called? Um, you know, those oh, uh, Tibetan things. But it's right, just a big, right. long white scarf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and it's very, it's actually very typical. And and but but I but and I but I see what I'm sort of when I close my eyes and think about it, I see their Rinpoche bending down so yeah. I must have not, not yeah. been able to yeah, yeah. And, 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 and I think he was sobbing too yeah oh he, he I'm sure he was I mean yeah. I'm sure I mean it it, it it profoundly changed my life right there you know yeah but okay uh, I, I guess I guess I gotta keep going here <laughs> you know <laughs> I gotta keep going mm. but but then I was gonna see how that kept going what kept going was basically that Rinpoche at that point was living in Boulder and starting to teach and I was I think in still in in Santa Fe or maybe in Taos and Berkeley Berkeley Johnson I don't know if you know her or not yes but she was, I knew her yeah yeah and uh, Berkeley was at Lama when I was at Lama but but Berkeley and I had a close connection at Lama because of um, Millie Johnstone. Did you did you know me, Millie? Well, I, I met Millie because she was at uh, right. Tatsahara and would do tea ceremony there. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. And and well, Berkeley she, was around yeah. since then or some. I didn't know her well, just to say hello to. She was yeah. from. Uh, she was from. Uh, 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 what's that town in Texas? Uh, Al, 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 oh. Albuquerque. No, no, right. No, right. Al, no, no, no. Uh, starts with a. Uh, Austin. I don't know. No, no, no. It's up in the Panhandle. Out. It's up northwest. It's. Yeah. Well, uh, see, I only knew her at Lama. She yeah. was at Lama, and 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 I don't know that, how she got there. I'm trying to remember how Abilene. she got there. Now. I mean. Abilene. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. But she and didn't so, seem like we, it. She was very sophisticated. Oh, she, yeah. Berkeley's always been that way. You know, she yeah. was always very elegant. And, and, of course, Millie, too. And But Millie became my tea teacher. And uh-huh. Do you know Millie, what her husband's Millie, job was? Yeah. He ran Bethlehem Steel. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, yeah, I knew Bill. I mean, I mean, oh, I mean, see, I mean, uh, you, I mean, the, this is an unending list of people that you're going to have to hear about because Millie was at, doing tea ceremony at at Lama, and I was her student. And at some point, I'm trying to remember when this was. She said, um, "You know, you got to go down to Mexico because my son George." 
I mean, it wasn't even Mexico. She said, you have to go south because you're an artist and you've never been down below the border. And I said, yep, it's true. And, and I'd literally just gotten out of college. I mean, I, when I was at Lama, I was just out, right out of college. And, um, and I was the youngster amongst the people at Lama for the most part. And so she said, well, my son George is a, a photographer for National Geographic, and he has this palapa on Lake Atitlan, which is up in the mountains in Guatemala. And, and you should go there because you'll, you'll find it fascinating. You'll find it amazing because the people down there are really genuine and they're very open and, you know, you're going to learn a lot if you go down there. So I ended up doing that. I, I literally got on a train. I think I was trying to remember, but I think I had to take a bus to the border and then I got on a train at the border, came down to Mexico city then I went to Oaxaca and, and literally, uh, I did not eat medicine with Maria on, on the way out to the coast, but I came damn close to it because that was the road that you had to take to get to the coast because right? I went to the Pacific coast. And I, these are all places that I've always been just ended up at, but I always end up at them again, put it that way. It's very interesting how this has happened because I, when I came down, I went out to the coast and then I came down further and, and I went to Atitlan and I went out into the countryside and this is all on chicken buses, right? And I'm a single white woman, no Spanish. Of course, most of the people there don't have Spanish either at that point. I mean, very few people spoke even market Spanish. It was, you know, local languages. But I, I just loved Mexico. And so, interestingly enough, um, I ended up coming over from Guatemala over to uh, Belize and, and then up the coast. And in, in like, well, no, but. 70 years of that, not, not quite 70, 50 years now, more, more than 50. I'm, I'm here again in the Yucatan in a, in a place that feels very much like home in a lot of ways, you know, it's very interesting. Mm. And I'm on retreat, basically. It, it is, it, I didn't sort of plan it that way, but um, I came down to take care of turtles because I've I've been taking care of turtles for a long time, various places, in the paws and other places. But yeah, they but, do that here um, too. There's a lot of turtle stuff yeah. going on here. Hey, so are you are you living there? Or are yeah. you there temporarily, or what? Uh, well, it's very interesting because I came down, and I, ironically, my son ended up coming down with me when he was 16 to learn to dive. And that turned into being a, a, one of his big things that he d has done with his life. But when he decided to get married again, after many times he tried, and I hope he keeps trying, um, uh -huh. he, he, when, he wanted me to come down after COVID because it, he was going to get married. And so I came down, and I hadn't been on this coast for a while. But see, I'm now a student and have been for some time now, well, probably 10 or 15 years, uh, as long as they can't say Rinpoche, right? And and Rinpoche has a good a good connection with Mexico and in Latin America. I mean, we it's a big sangha here, and so um, I've been here. I came down thinking I was going to live in Acamal and take care of turtles, but I moved over to Valo de Lead, which is closer to Merida, uh, because I whacked my knee and I, it was hard to walk, but I, but I, I mean, in Rinpoche did this huge, uh, huge retreat. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to stay. I mean, I had already, I had already decided to stay. I was going to, I, I was moving to Mexico, but I didn't realize that I was moving to my next retreat, basically. I mean, because, which is sort of a retreat in the world still, but it, because I'm, not in solitary retreat, but I live now in Valladolid. I have this little, literally, small, it's, you know, a, it's a wonderful little casita, and uh, that that uh, fits me and the dog. And we're both old now and having a hard time getting around. So it's 
really nice to, there's a garden and, and it's, you know, it's, I mean, it reminded, I mean, Bali looked like a lot like this area, you know, same kind of uh, greenery and jungle and stuff. And, and, and so I'm here rather than being in Colorado. And I think this is probably my last adventure. Who knows? I mean, it's impossible to tell, but I mean, she's 15. So, I mean, I, I'm sticking around until she goes and that could be tonight or tomorrow or, or 50 years from mm. now. I don't know. Hey, do you ever so, run into um, somebody down there named Kelsang, uh, Zogdor, something like that? American guy. Old, hmm. old Zen student. Uh, not yet. Yeah. Yeah. You never know, though. His I name was you. Van Voorhees. Uh, and Van he's, Voorhees. he's, um, I think he's a teacher now in, in a sort of uh, a more obscure Tibetan, uh, uh, you know, uh, sect or trip. Well, I mean, I've see, I've left out, for one thing, another of my, my main teachers, too, because, I mean, um, because Zangzer Kensei, of course, was... was uh, Heir to, you know, to Dilgo Kensei Rinpoche. And I got to go, I mean, I mean, it, I mean, I'm just the kind of person that I don't even know why I'm doing things sometimes, but it's sort of like, okay, because I, I remember being in Boulder and, um, it, this was not that all that long ago, 10 or 15, uh, not probably, yeah, at least 15 years, maybe, maybe 20. Um, and and I just had, uh, you know, I mean, my teachers just sort of come to me, put it that way. And I don't even know that they were going to be my teachers, but they know, I think. They sort of go, okay, well, I guess we'll take her on, <laughs> you know, put it that way, you know. Because because I'd, I'd seen this notice in, in, in Dorje Zong, and I'd just been going through Boulder, and it was like, okay, do you want to... Um, come to, to France because Dilgo Kensei is going to be doing this retreat. And, of course, um, Oh, did you study retreat, with Sogyo? Uh, I didn't study with Sogyo Rinpoche, but he put the, he re- put the retreat on, right? Yeah. And so, and so I looked at this poster and I have a son by that time and he's in school and, and, you know, it's going to be in the summertime and, and I'm a single mom by that time, and I'm sort of going, eh, how am I going to pull that off? And and uh, this friend of mine uh, says, well, you know, you should do it. Why not? And I had just gotten a job at the city of Boulder, and and uh, and I had a, a really son of a bitch, uh, I mean, guy to deal with, who was the head of my my my. Uh, the the open space group that I was working with and and I and I said well I really want to go to this thing and it's happening like in a week and and I have to decide whether I'm going to go or get not have my job basically and I go in to talk to my boss and he's being very snooty and really nasty which is t- totally I mean he's great at buying land but he's horrible with people and and I say to him, well, I've, you know, I've decided I would want to go to this retreat. It's in France and it's uh, two weeks or something. And I'm, I know that I'm just starting this job, <laughs> you know, and he's going, and he gets really nasty. He goes, well, if you, if you want to go, you have to go talk to the city manager. And right then I'm sort of this sort of ding, ding, ding goes in my head because the city manager's sister, I think his sister is at Dordogne with Dilgo Kensei Rinpoche at that moment, right? Huh. <laughs> and so I said, and so I said, okay, I'll talk to I'll talk to him. <laughs> and so I go into Joe and I say, Joe, you know, uh, you know, you're, I mean, he's a Buddhist too, so I mean, he sort of understood what was going on. And I said, you know, I really want to go, but Jim won't let me go unless you say it's okay. And he goes, well, I usually don't try to go over the heads of other, you know, other staff people, but I guess I could, you could go. And so I go into Jim and Jim's going to be really, try to be really nasty. Right. And he, he says, well, okay, you can go, but you can only go for a week. 
And I thought, oh, shit. And then, and then I thought, okay, I'll take it. And I said, I'll take it. <laughs> he was pissed off. I literally, I got a ticket, got my best friend to take care of my kid, and got on a plane and went to went to the mountains in France. And, and of course, the, the people I met there, I mean, Dogo Kensei was there, but more important, I mean, Sogar and Pache had put together, I mean, the gathering, but the, Dogo Kensei, who was, was the person who people were there for, and of course, um, you know, Zanzar Kensei and Pache was very young then, and, 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 Chagdak Tuku was older. I mean, there were all these people there that I had had connections with already. And it was like, oh, my God, you know, I'm just, I, I mean, I got, I, I got here, you know, I got here. And so um, that then led to me going, I think I better just get off my butt and actually start practicing a bunch because I think whatever's going on with these guys, they know what they're doing and I don't, and I better start working on the old ego crap because it's definitely going to get in the way. <laughs> you know? mm -hmm. So, and, and so, you know, I mean, I, I'm still working on it, put it that way. Mm -hmm. And I don't tell people these stories unless they already sort of know some of this stuff because it doesn't make sense to a lot of people. You know, I mean, it's like, Okay. I mean, it's not even of interest to some people, you know? So I guess, I guess the reason I was drawn to, to the fact that you've been sort of carrying this tale on for as long as it's gone. I mean, it's, it's like an inner story. It's, you know what I mean? It's not, yeah. it's not something that's of interest to the larger yeah. world in a lot of ways. You know? Yeah. When, but it's really important as a practice thing. Oh, yeah. Really. Oh, really? Well, that's, that's uh, nice to hear. Uh, yeah. Um, what year did you go to France uh, doing that? Perpetel? Uh, well, I'm trying to remember because Alex was, oh, he was probably 10 or 12 then. I can't remember. So he's. What decade? He's oh, well, it was. Well, he would have been. He was in grade school. So I'm trying to remember how old. He's 14. He's about 47 now. So it was a while back. I mean, it was, and it was the last big thing that, that Dogo Kensei did before he died. Because, what what decade? What decade? You say it was 13, it was 47 years ago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was it like uh, 34 uh, years ago? Uh, yeah, probably. Which is 1990. Probably. That would make sense because I I I took care I did yeah Earth Day I was trying to remember the first Earth Day because that came in the same I think first that Earth the same Day was maybe. about 1968 or something uh, no, the, the the first one but I I ran one I ran one in Boulder mm -hmm. too and I'm trying to that was that I think was the same summer or the summer before or after but I mean it's starting I mean I really need to sit down and make a time timeline here. To, to be able to connect it all, because I mean, it's, it's it's it overwhelms me thinking about it. I'm sort of going, well, how did I, what, why did I do that? Why did I do this? Why did I do this? I mean, and I'm sort of going, it was a blessing from this, these teachers who just said, you know, she's she doesn't have anything better to do. We might as well just take her and and, and let her do do something useful. Right? Uh huh. So what did what what did you do between 1990 and now? Well, I I went back to Boulder and and uh, I as I say I raised my son and I basically in between that I had gotten married up at I mean my I, my uh, husband for that child. Uh, was not a Buddhist when he started out, but he became a Buddhist, and we went to seminary up in in uh, in uh, up in Canada, and Alex was tiny then. So I mean, you know, this is all a long time ago because he's, he's 
as I say, about 47 now. So it's about 47. He was he was in, you know, the snow was d- deeper than his head, put it that way. So, uh-huh. um, <laughs> yeah. So, and 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 that was at Lake Louise. And there were two or three seminaries there. I can't remember. I think there were two, but I I was at one. And and then I when I left that seminary, I came back down. And I'm trying to remember how this one worked because I hadn't. I, let's see, I, how did I get to California? Because uh, I, I, I had studied. I mean, I studied with people, and then I would. I'm trying to remember because we start. We had started. Oh, Gregory Gregory Bateson was at Europa the first summer. So that and, and see that was the same summer. Millie was there, Gregory was there, um, Cobancino was there. Mm. I mean, it, it was quite a, a you know assemblage of people. But this is after that. Um, I decided that I wanted to go out to California, and uh, and, and that I'm trying to remember how that worked because that was before I had Alex, and I'm trying to remember how. Marvin and I got together. Oh, I know how. I, I applied for graduate school because Gregory said, you should go to my seminar. I, he, he taught a, 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 a graduate seminar at Santa Cruz. Yeah. And that's how. And so I decided I'd go out and do that. And, and uh, so I went out to California and went down to Santa Cruz. And uh, my sister was living in Palo Alto at that time, so I was driving back and forth to the the seminar. And Gregory said, "Oh, well, why don't you just you know get in the PhD program?" And I said, "Oh, why not?" You know, <laughs> I was like, I had no clue. And so uh, I ended up being at Santa Cruz, I was, and I was doing, you know, I was oh man, I I mean, I have I there's a lot of things that I haven't told you about my sort of I'm a gardener. I mean, I I'm, I know we're both gardeners. Put it that way. I could tell you were gardeners too. But, who, what do you but, mean? Who's um, both gardeners? You. No, I'm not you. a gardener. Well, you're a plant person. No, I'm not. Oh well, you, well, you take care of them. Okay, they're still alive. I don't. We have a gardener. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, that makes sense. That's I listen. Nice. I've <laughs> I've been in charge of places with gardens. And I worked in them when they needed me to, but I've never, right. you know, to me there's plants and trees and rocks and stuff. Oh, okay. well, and I've been see, surrounded I've been by life. plant people. Uh, right. Uh, and uh, I cannot, I, I would would not be honest uh, if I said I was a plant person. <laughs> well, uh, it, it, some of the good stuff rubbed off on you, put it that way. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, we got a lot of plants here. I'll say that. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> uh, so, but I mean, so I mean, we could, I mean, we could definitely go on, but I, I don't know if I. Well, wait a I'm minute. Not, I just want to know. My, my all right, all right. You were doing graduate so work. So uh, yeah. There. So, so what happened in next? The History of consciousness PhD program, right? Yeah. And I got pregnant. I uh, because I met my husband at the. At the food stand, my husband was in the in the. Uh, oh, who started that? I'm trying to remember. Somebody up in the in in the Bay Area started whole, what? Uh, gardening. Alan as, Chadwick as, as, started the garden at, at UC Alan Santa Cruz. Chadwick. That's right. So my ex-husband, I mean, is now an ex-husband, but he was. A guy at the plants at the at the food stand at the bottom of the hill when I was going up the hill every day to go to my graduate seminars and teach, and he he was from Louisiana and a real southern boy and and you know I I, I had I had come out to California because of also because Ed Abbey was. Uh, a paramour of mine. And at that point he was sort of between numerous lovers, et cetera. And so it was like, okay. 
I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm just going to, I'm going to just have a kid and have a real husband and do that. And, uh, so I did that. And, and so, uh, Alex grew up in the garden in Santa Cruz among his other places and out on coast road. And, mm. uh, and Gregory ran a seminar, and so, and then Cobacino married my son, my uh, ex-husband, and I, oh. which was really cool. Oh, and yeah, and I mean, and I, and when I look back on on things that that I didn't pay attention to, I mean, I should have I should have realized that when Coben married uh, Steve Jobs that that th- there was some connection there, but, and there is, I mean, we never, Steve and I never met, but, but I was on the other side of the hill raising a kid and going to graduate school. But, but it turns out that his favorite book to, according to his bi- bibliography, um, is, was be here now. And I thought, no, no, oh, Steve Jobs favorite book was Zen mind, beginner's mind. And next was be here now. And I oh, have okay. that from a higher source than his biography. Oh, good. Okay, that's good because <laughs> because uh, well, no, that that corrects that corrects one of my stories then because because I do say that to people, if, especially if I'm talking to Apple Care, I say you know you know, and I don't have any claims to fame because I, of course we never put our names on anything with Be Here Now. Yeah. And so I'm not known as somebody who did be here now, you know, I yeah. mean, I'm, I'm a secret person and I mean, and I don't feel bad about that because frankly, I think my ego was plenty big and bad already. So does, I didn't need to add to it um, this lifetime at all. And so, I mean, a lot of these things only are of interest to people like you put it that way. You know what I mean? uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, so, but I mean, the old codgers like us need to be able to tell these stories to each other because I think they do help bring the Dharma into the current situation. And I, it's interesting how that works, right? Because I mean, I don't know if, how you feel, but I mean, I, I think that I'm a different person than I would have been if I hadn't done all this stuff, right? I mean, well, yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, after you see Santa Cruz, it, well, where did you see Santa Cruz lead to? Okay, so uh, uh, okay, so then um, I got invited by Rinpoche when I had a, my kid, and that we were in Santa Cruz, and Rinpoche said, "Well, uh, I need somebody to take care of of." Uh, Carm- uh, uh, the retreat center down in the valley in, in the Werfano Valley. And, uh, and so uh, what, off we what went. state? Colorado. The, 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 the retreat Werfano. center in the Werfano Valley. Not, yeah, not Rocky the Mountain Dharma Center. That, no, not Rocky Mountain Dharma Center. That, that was the land. Yeah. And, and that, that, but so no, this is the retreat in, center. Almost, I, you, it, but wasn't that in, uh, Southeast Colorado. It's it, right. It's in the Werfano Valley. The, right, right. Yes. Yeah. Now I remember Maggie Crest had a place, and that's right by Libre, the commune. Well, and of course Libre were all my friends, right? Yeah, because they're, we were neighbors. Yeah, right? so, I remember now. Yeah. So, so Linda and Dean, and I mean, you know, I mean, and it was, and it was a connection then back to. Santa Cruz. I mean, not not to Santa Cruz, to uh, Santa Fe, because I mean, by that time, you know, it was, uh, we were uh, we were up on the mountain, but people were coming through all the time who knew each other. I mean, it was a big. It's, well, it's a big mycelial net that we live in, right? I mean, mm-hmm. what what we're what we're discussing right now is, I what I call a mycelial net. You know, we didn't know when we got into it, how we were connected, but we were, right? Mm. (laughs) Yeah. You know, and, and, and I do put it into the very woo woo world because of the way it, things just kept changing for me. I mean, it's like, I mean, I remember very clearly, for instance, 
I had broken up with David, and, and this is, and I'm trying to remember where this falls in, but I, I might have been, I don't know if it was, it was, I think after I left Saragota Road, but, but I remember um, that, you know, it was, it, it's just, the connections are so strong sometimes that you sort of go, well, I don't know how that happened. Yeah, but you say you happened. remembered, you remembered something about David. What was that? Well, oh, well, I mean, things I remember about David are very interesting because I mean, I mean, David well, you had something so, specific you were going to say. Well, I was, I mean, I found David to be a, a difficult person because he, I think he had had a harsh childhood. He, he he would tell me things like that he wasn't allowed to eat at the table sometimes or things you know things that my my background was so different than his mm-hmm. he was so brilliant and so erudite and so fucked up at the same time and it it was like very interesting to me and i mean of course uh i never got to meet his his ex-wife i she would be on the phone sometimes, but, but Sabrina, I, I, I got to meet and, you know, but not much. And, mm-hmm. and so David was always sort of a difficult one in my head. And interestingly enough, though, I think part of a, re- a reaction to that, which I didn't realize at the time, but sort of got me e- even deeper into that kind of non useful relationships probably was Ed Abbey who, who, had come, I think, to maybe see Carl and, and Jack uh, up on Sarah Gordo. I'm trying to remember exactly how I met Ed, but I think that was it. And he was going to go up into Colorado to do a, a big hike and said, you want to go? And I said, fine, but I can't go yet. I don't know what I was doing. And so I had a friend literally take me up on a motorbike a motorcycle up to the four corners and met ed and we went into the wilderness together and it was like that was the kind of thing i used to do you know and and of course having been in the wilderness for a whole summer with greg i mean i i was i'm i've been a wilderness person a lot and i mean i i did always sort of fancy that if i had a profession at some point in my life, I would be the person that would put people out in ancient ruins and let them be, you know, on retreat. And I would go bring them food and stuff. I mean, that was my uh-huh. Uh-huh. Little dream dream job, uh, which I don't think I've ever done. But it's probably somebody would be. I mean, people have done it now a lot. But, yeah. Hey, uh, uh, so uh, Rimche asked you to. Uh, take care of the uh, retreat center in the Wherefield Valley. Did you do that? DK, DK did yeah. And and Alex went to kindergarten in Gardner. Gardner, oh then, my God, that is a really yeah. tiny place. Tiny place. The valley is an amazing place. Big big place, you know. Yeah, and, they're uh, very uh, scantily populated. I met a guy yeah. in Gardner who had never left it, and he was, like, very old, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. and it was just unimaginable. Uh, yeah. Because there was a woman named Margaret Cress that had, uh-huh. uh, that yeah. had uh, like, a what she called it, what did she call it, her farm, her ranch. It was, you know, like a ranch uh-huh. house and some right. land there. right. And uh, right. I went and fixed it up once for her with my my mate at the time, Liz Twomey. We spent a week there. Maggie was so pleased with what we did. And Daddy oh, Dave cool. was living. Daddy Dave. Oh, my God. Remember him? He was living at the bottom yeah. of the mountain where Libre was, where Maggie's place yeah. was. And he had all these yeah. kids. And yeah. he he just got stoned all the time. And I remember going right. over there and the kids opening the refrigerator and it wasn't it wasn't cooling and going, ooh, critters. Uh, <laughs> and the kids would have their little uh, stashes of pot in in their <laughs> pockets. And it was oh, yeah. it was, you know, it was movie quality, uh, stoned hippie. Anarchist commune trip. Oh yeah, 
<laughs> oh well, that's the thing. Is the, oh the that, see that's a whole other story. So that the valley, you know, is I mean, was full of interesting people, and of course they spread out and are in lots of different places now. But I mean, uh, it, it it drew people, you know, it drew people, and of course the. the I got down there because Rinpoche sent us, you know. I mean, that was the thing. I didn't, I didn't come up on the valley myself, but, but, um, but yeah. you know, I got you, to know everybody. And you, we, Peter it was Rabbit, definitely... you probably knew Peter Rabbit. Peter Rabbit was a dear friend of mine. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, just this huge group of people that we have in. in I mean, as I say, it is a my, mycelial network because i mean none of us planned all this right as far as i know or unless you did (laughs) yeah well we've been over that aspect so i want to hear what happened at uh werfano valley in the werfano okay well as you can ascertain growing pot was a big deal down there at that point Uh uh-huh and I'm trying to remember. They got in uh, trouble. Libra names. got in trouble. And, oh, and they, they were really names. mad at one of the people. Might have been Peter Rabbit. I can't remember. One of them yeah. they were really mad at because, oh, I think they were mad at the one that was growing too much pot and making money off uh-huh. it or something. They got them all in trouble. Yeah, yeah. Right. No, see, and my ex-husband who was from Santa Cruz where he'd been sh- <laughs> tutored by Alan Chadwick, right? So sort of like he knew how to grow pot. <laughs> so, I mean, uh-huh. I'm positive, but I sort of stayed out of that. You know, I mean, I, I, I really just put people in cabins and <laughs> took care of the uh-huh. kids. And, uh-huh. ah. and, <laughs> how long did that go on? <laughs> That was a couple of years, and then and then it was clear that that uh, Alex was ready to you know graduate from kindergarten and be in school. So we came up to Boulder, and uh, then, as I say, the the seeds of of not being a successful relationship as far as a marriage was probably clear the day we met each other because I mean he was a southern boy and I was a northern girl. And um, I remember going to family counseling when when we were still trying to keep things together. And and he said, you know, the guy said, well, how do you see your relationship? And my ex-husband said, well, I see it as sort of I'm I steer the ship. And I'm sort of going, yeah, I think that's the problem. <laughs> you know, uh-huh. very interesting. So, so I haven't had the best choices of partners during the, these years, but I think like, well, you know, I managed to deal with all these people who, I, I mean, well, I mean, oh, here's another story that you'll like. You, did you know you knew Millie, right? And you knew that Millie. Uh, Millie, Millie was, uh, I knew her to say hello when she was at Tassajara. Uh, okay. Can't say I knew okay. her. Okay. Well, she. I know more about had, her than. than that. Okay. Well, she and Bill had a uh, an apartment uh, in a building that was right across the street, I think, from the UN. And and I was in New York visiting her, and Alan Watts came for breakfast, and Alan had it all in his head. I mean, Alan being Alan. I mean, it was interesting because I mean, I never saw myself as as a hippie. I never saw myself as a hippie. I was an artist. And I still don't quite deal with, I mean, I mean, I was a free thinker, put it that way. And I didn't feel like I, um, I wasn't, I mean, there was, there wasn't, I, there were no role models for that, you know, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't have wanted to be one. But, but the fact was, is, is I remember Alan saying to me, and I'm trying to remember her name and you maybe remember her, but she was a madam in San Francisco and Alan knew her, and he Margot said, Saint James. Margot Saint James. She said, "You should, you should become a madam, and and you know, you have this this broad, broad vistas of of everything." And and I'm sort of going, oh, "I'm not a girl from Ohio." <laughs> I guess, like, I've 
I have no clue about what I've gotten myself into most of the time. So I, I don't think I'm going to be directing any of this. And mm-hmm. so, but I remember Alan saying that and thinking, oh, yeah, I'm glad I didn't go that path. But that said, I mean, I did hang out with Ed, and Ed went through like four wives in the time that he was alive. And, you know, and, and I sort of going, yep. Glad I missed that one because he reminded me a lot of my dad. Uh, yeah. I love my dad, but I wasn't ready to be married to one. Yeah. So. Yeah. I think uh, uh, Mike Phillips brought Mar- Margot St. James to Tassara. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Oh, really? Interesting. Interesting. She went through a homeless period, I think, uh, later. Yeah. I can't yeah. remember what happened to her, but. Uh, uh, I might, I, it might not have been homeless. It might have just been, she was living in a trailer and having a hard time. It's, it's, it's too, the, right. the, the, the memory's too vague. I can't, I can't get hold of it. So, right. all right. right. Now, after Where for No Valley, uh, you went back to Boulder and back did you have Boulder. a job? Were you making money being an artist or anything? I, I, well, the first thing I tried to do, because I had been in graduate school, but I did hadn't written a, a, a dissertation yet, uh, was I went into now thriving Naropa, right, which I'd helped start, and said, you know, well maybe, you know, maybe I, I could teach, and they say, okay, we can give you six hundred dollars a quarter or something. I'm going, yeah, well, I'm a single mother, and I don't think that goes far enough for me to feed my kid and me. So I ended up being in the trailer in Boulder, but but <laughs> that said, a lot of other people did do. But the, but so I was in Boulder as a you know a, a practitioner. I mean, I was definitely you know at I, I was definitely that's what I did in Boulder, and then I got a job with the city of Boulder, and mm. I kept that job for quite some time. And and I uh, my mother had been uh, was a nurse. Who worked for the Red Cross and 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 eventually was a manager of large scale bloodmobile kind of you know save the world kind of stuff and my you know my parents were just that kind of people and so I was sort of like all gung ho to do something with the environment and so I got a job with Open Space and and uh, because I'm I mean I've already been like what six years in the wilderness at that time. You know, and it's like, okay, I, I, I know what brings people to the place where they want to be. And, and so that's what I did for the city of Boulder for a number of years. And so, and I quit to take care of my mom after my dad died. And so, um, so it's been, that was a, a good piece of my career. I mean, I, I was an artist, but I, People would say, and actually, like people from the Valley or something, they'd come up and they, well, are you doing artwork? And I'm going, yeah, I'm doing artwork. I've got uh, 1,100 people out there, you know, counting birds and taking care of stuff. And I consider that my art right now, you know. And it's it, and it, it, that's absolutely the way it was, you know. I mean, I, I, I got a chance really to take care of the earth really directly and have a team to do it. And that was, I'm so glad that that's how I ended up having a career rather than being some star spangled something or other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's worked out much better because, I mean, as I say, in in telling you these things, I mean, I, I mean, well, for me, it's been interesting because coming down here, when I was going, just going to Akamal to take care of turtles, I was like, oh, I'll just take care of the turtles and hang out at the beach and just, you know, be um, be helpful in the community. And then, um, then it became clear to me that that there was so many. Po- I mean, I was I was had been in city politics then by well for a long a long period of time, and it was like I don't want to be in a situation where People are still striving to make their mark. I just want to be the person who's helping out, you know. <laughs> and, and so it's, it, it was interesting because I decided to come over to Valladolid because I thought, you know, it's a small, it's a medium-sized town. It's like maybe 80,000 people. And it's not Merida. It's, it's definitely a, a, 
it's it's an interesting combo because it's a, a colonial town and it's been here for a long long time and it does have that sense of the deep part of mexico that you know that that i've decided it works really well for retreat, actually. And then and the, the idea, you know, that Rinpoche is had has, I mean, I've been I've been over in on the Watuco side for a number of years because he was holding retreats over in Watuco, and I hadn't been over here for a long time. So when I came here again, it was like, oh yeah, this might be my last adventure. I mean, I don't know because I mean, it's simple. I, I have a very simple life here. And it's yeah, like, it sounds um, good. And you said Rinpoche. Yeah. Would you? Would you? You. This is a new Rinpoche. Would you remind me of his name again? Zong Zong Zarkense, who ah. is the prote, he, protege of Dilgo Kense Rinpoche, one of them. Uh, and and would you spell it? Oh, uh, okay. Zong Zar Z Z. Oh boy, I, I always screw this up. Zongzar. It's D Z O. I, I mean, I'd have to write it down, and I can't see in the dark. So. All right, D Z O um, Zongzar. All right, at least I know it starts with yeah. D Z. Uh, and Kensei. Just remember Kensei Rinpoche too, because I mean, if you can connect with Kyogo Kensei Rinpoche, you'll get to him because they're all connected. Right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you can, okay. You can find. find. And yeah. and it's a huge song, guys. It's a huge sangha. I mean, I was flipping out with my son because I'd come down here. I'm totally, well, nice that we're talking, put it that way, because I, I mean, this is how I got through COVID was having friends all over the planet. And the bottom line was, is like, okay, I'm totally non-tech. I have totally no, I have no clue about what I'm doing when I get with my computer and my iPhone. And it's like, Ah, uh, wait a minute. Oh, I gotta get into this meeting. It's in Zoom and it's in Australia. And what time is it? <laughs> it's like, oh my god! You just click on the link, <laughs> right? Well, it's 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 interesting because I mean, I I find it fascinating that 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 my my final last two raw is definitely going out into the world and and saying, yeah, okay, I'll try this one too. You know, yeah. this one is probably the hardest one in some ways. Yeah. Because, you know, I mean, I've got enough, I've got enough under my belt now to know that I got a lot of stuff to do still and that I should probably pay a lot of attention to it. But on the other hand, the world is out there doing what the world's doing right now and you can't really ignore it either. <laughs> so, uh, uh. I mean, I mean, like tomorrow, tomorrow, my challenge is going to be I went back and forth and back and forth and back and forth about whether I was going to send a ballot in this this time because I thought like, oh, I don't want to be on some list someplace when Donald sends the troops down. <laughs> right? uh, no, 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 no. Votes are anonymous. Exactly. Like it, because I'm in Boulder County and I know people at Boulder County, I felt like I could do it. But now because I'm down here, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's on. It's online, and it's you know. I'm having to sort of. Oops. Oh, that was my bedtime reminder. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I'm online, but I I don't know what I'm doing still. So it it becomes very fascinating sometimes because literally sometimes I'll literally pick up the phone and it'll be somebody on the other side of the planet that I haven't talked to for a long, long time, and it all goes really smoothly. And then other times it's like, okay, I talked to Zoom, and they said it was okay, and it isn't okay. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, well, just make sure you vote, uh, I would yeah, say. Yeah, well, well tomorrow's, my, tomorrow's my day because they're going to walk me through it. I mean, the Boulder County people, they got it. They got that it down. Away. But, yeah, you know, so, but that, that said, they've, the government, not not Boulder County, but the U.S., the piece of paper that you have to fill out, it's like they tossed military and people that are just out of the country into the same category. Yeah. Which makes it very confusing for somebody like me who, who I'm saying, um, okay, where do I check that box or where do I don't, I'm supposed to do this? Really? That, you know, I mean, I'm just. I'm you, just you can do it. You can you know, do it. 
I can do it. I yeah. can do it. Yeah. So, do you, listen, yeah. uh, it's about time we wrap this up. Uh, do you have anything you'd like to say in conclusion? This has been very in interesting conclusion. for me. <laughs> I've enjoyed it. Right. Well, okay. Yeah. I mean, for me, the, the, the deal is right now, I didn't go to my 55th anniversary at Smith, which I probably should have. Um, you know, I haven't done the things that I thought I was going to do because I ended up coming down here with a lot of those things that I could have sort of made into um, paraphernalia. I mean, paraphernalia from this age, but I'm not. I'm not. I haven't told this story to people except you and people who would enjoy it. And so I don't want now in my elderly years to say, oh, yeah, I was very famous back then. You know, I mean, I don't, but I want it to be useful somehow. And so that's my goal at this point. Well, um, that what's useful I, is that uh, you uh, say you are practicing now. Yeah, yeah. That your focus and, and then, is still on awakening. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. So that's the through line of the whole thing. Is yeah. is uh, yeah. uh, you know, you're it's uh, yeah. it's what Suzuki it Roshi is. called wisdom seeking wisdom. Yeah, well, I I hope so. You know, I mean, and and as I say, it's interesting now because I mean, I have to make. I mean, it's like my dog is definitely she's she's really an incredible dog. I mean, and I'm sort of you know, it's sort of like okay, I am I'm not just in retreat for myself at this point. I've, and I, and I do know that there have been plenty of dogs that spend a lot of time with people in retreat. And I think the dogs that spend a lot of time with people in retreat get way ahead of the pack. <laughs> <That way. laughs> at least, at least this one seems to, I mean, she never, she has never sort of met a person that she didn't connect to in some way. Mm. And it's like, and it seems to me that there's something there that, uh, you know, I, I was lucky. I was just lucky to have somebody who could guide me through this stage, right? Because, I mean, literally, I'm in Dzogchen right now. It's like, you know, I don't have somebody to talk to every day about my practice. But the dog just, like, keeps me right back on. There you, you know, go. Man, there you go. You know? Yeah. It, it, there's, there's no... No frills on this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, let me ask you something else. Uh, I uh, I have a book called Tassara Stories uh, mm-hmm. c- coming out next September. And I and I thought about, you know, having some illustrations in it or some photographs or something. Mm-hmm. But I don't want, like, mm-hmm. glossy photographs. I want, like... Mm-hmm. You know, I, I want black and white things, sort of minimal. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. you, you do that sort of thing? Well, I have been. I mean, I thought, I mean, oh, God. I mean, you have to sort of take pity on me. Because when COVID started, uh, was right before COVID started, I thought, you know, I I think I might want, because I had been, was been taking care of my mom for a while at that point, right? And I thought, you know, I could use that talent that where I was putting people together with jobs that really meant something to them and they were doing it for, for the earth and for stuff. And so I, that was what I was going to specialize in. I was going to just coach online. And, and then I got into this amazingly alien world of the, of the Internet, and I, I, I was like, oh, my God, I've just been totally overwhelmed. I mean, I, it was like I, I will never be able to do this. And so midway through COVID, I was still on the couch sort of going, okay, maybe I can pull this off. Maybe I can just have an art store. Maybe I can do this. Maybe I can do that. Thinking I needed more money than I – I mean, literally, by having a very modest life down here, I can live – much better than I can. Well, you know that in the in the states, I can right. look much better down here. That's and right. I, and I didn't. I hadn't really connected in with that. And so even when I came down, I thought, well, 
my daughter-in-law, she, she knows how to run a website and stuff. I'll probably just turn it all over to her. Well, I don't even know if my driver, my son and my daughter-in-law are going to keep together. And I'm sort of going, it might all go away. On the other hand, it's like, okay, you're not, you're not making any money on it now. You're not needing to make any money on it now. Why would you go back into that? So, yes, I would definitely do it for a friend, but I wouldn't do it. You know what I mean? It would be, I don't know how, I don't know how we would manage it because you would have to be really helpful for me. To, I mean, I have like 13,000 photos in my, my iCloud, right? <laughs> and I, and I need to actually just even sort them out and deal with them there. And so I don't know what kind of amount you're talking about, for instance. How about one, so, one sketch? One sketch, yes. I mean, that's simple. All right. And, well, we'll and, talk about that later. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. 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 And, and and I do have some artwork, too. I mean, and see, I didn't because... because well, when I, I, was I, I, dance, I, don't, I don't need artwork about other things. <laughs> well, I was going to say, if, if there's something relevant, though. I mean, you no, know... No, there won't be anything relevant. Stuff. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't believe it. You don't think so? No. You don't think so? Well, okay. If you can just send me something uh, if you think it's relevant. I, I Well, well, think about think about paging through uh be here now. And you'll see it, 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 it you could see the difference in in people because we all worked on each other's pages. That's why we don't have didn't have our names on anything. And the the copyright whatever copyright there ever was is I think in the hands of I don't know, some people in California or something. And, you know, I've never made a penny on it. But the fact is, is if you want to sort of see what my style was. No, no, I'd can, rather I'd rather uh, give you an idea and have you do something. And then I could see right, that. Right. Well, that would be fun. I mean, that yeah. would be fun. And, and I and I, I think, you know, I, I can't guarantee anything. Obviously, I live day to day. I mean, literally. You know, as you you do too, and everybody does. Yeah, <laughs> whether look, they know it or not. Yeah, I've done a lot of things. Most things don't work out. So, uh, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the way yeah. I look at things. Okay, uh, so put it uh, put it out there, and I and I and I won't promise because, as I say, it, it is sort of a day to day thing for me now. But but it's not. It would be wonderful because I haven't been doing any artwork since I've been down here. I thought I was going to, but what I ended up doing was. The kids in Akamo have a, a – there's a kids' library there. It's actually a, 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 an incredible little school. And and uh, because I was an artist, the, you know, I got invited to come and play with the kids. Well, the kids are, are incredible artists already. And it's like, oh, my God, you know. And so I, I thought I was going to do that. But when I came over here, I realized it was probably too much for me to take on as an ongoing thing. But that said, I got over here and I thought, well, now I don't have a, a gallery or anything. I don't do I want to even produce more work because I've got a lot of work. And and but on the other hand, yes, I still would love to do that. And, All and right. It would be interesting to play with it. All know, right. We'll see. We'll see. I'll get back yeah. to you on that. Yeah. Well, look, it's okay. been really good talking with you. I've well, really I've enjoyed it, too. Yeah. Um and um, I'm sure uh, we will continue to be in touch. You're not on WhatsApp, are you? I am on WhatsApp, although yeah. I'm not very good on it. You don't. It, it, you I mean, keep saying stuff like that. It's like you can pick up a phone. Uh, I it, can pick up a phone, and that works pretty well. And it, yeah. it, it is amazing how amazing sometimes it is. It's like, holy shit, it works. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's just... It, I've just entered a new era, which is going to be weird because this phone is an Apple phone, and I can't get a new battery for it, and and I'm I'm really having to flail around. And my son's going to send me a, a new phone from the states or his old phone, but it'll have to have a U.S. number on it in order to get it down here without taxes and stuff. So so I may have two numbers soon. But this yeah, one I'm that's keeping no problem. as long as I as long as I can keep the phone going. But I don't know how long yeah. the phone will go for. Yeah. So we'll see. But 
But you can look me up. Oh, wait a minute. I think if my daughter-in-law has left my, my website up, you can look me up at SusanRossCreative.com. Oh, good, because I need I think, a picture of you. Does it, it have a picture of you? I think it has a picture of me. Does it have some I'm, old and, pictures and, and, of you? I, I, uh, want, I want new and old. Well, I'm trying to remember... It has one of me at, in Bhutan, so that's not very old, but it's probably 10 or 15 years old. And um, But I think, I mean, I can send you, I think I probably can send you pictures easily. Yeah, send over. me pictures. We want, yeah. I want one picture for the cover of the podcast, and I want okay. one picture uh, on uh, cuke.com. We have uh, Now and Then. So it would okay. be really good to have one from the 70s. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I will look around and see because, I mean, as, as I say, I have like thousands of pictures, but they're literally like 52-card pickup because I've had three computers and I've never, you know, put them all together. All I need is two. I could figure out. All I need okay, is so two. I'll, I'll look through. I'll look through stuff and I'll send you – I'll send you more than that, and then you can just dump the ones you don't like, you know, and, and then we'll get closer to what you really want. So. Okay. Very good. All right. Okay. Okay. Well, well, I wish I could be having lunch with you, though, because it really looks like it, we could be neighbors, practically, <laughs> from the looks of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a little space between us. Uh, well, I like. Yeah. I used to live in Mexico. I liked it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Long time ago, uh, 59 years ago. No, six. Let's see. No, no, no. 58 well, years ago, I left Mexico. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, see, we might have met each other on the bus. <laughs> right. Right. Okay, Susan. It was wonderful talking okay. with you. You take All right. care. All, All right. right. Stay in touch. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Night-night. So thanks a lot, Susan. Um, I'm going to repeat your uh, website name. It's SusanRossCreative.com. S-U-S-A-N-R-O-S-S Creative.com. So that's neat. Uh, Anyway, it was good talking with you. And, uh, hmm, I... uh, you know, I, I hope that thing uh, works out about doing some illustrations. I don't know. You know, it's hard. To, I, I need pictures. Anybody that's got pictures of things at Tassajara that aren't new, you know, this is this book is about the first year of Tassajara, 1967. So anything that would apply to that, you know, which one? I I just have an idea of little sketches in the book, and I think I can get pictures of people. But if you have pictures of people who were there in '67, I could take that too. And then I was just thinking of having some night black and white sketches here and there. And you know uh, who who suggested this was my uh, co-conspirator, former agent now. Advising advisor and co-conspirator Michael Katz, he said, but, but you see that the whole thing tank comes goes through 1975 and it's massive. And he said, oh yeah, this could be like, this could be like uh, be here now, and you know have illustrations and stuff. And uh, so as soon as she said she worked on be here now, I thought, oh well, maybe. I did look at her website, and uh, the the art is excellent, and and uh, yeah, she does really good black and white line work. So uh, maybe okay. Well, anyway, thanks a lot, Susan Ross. I uh, appreciate it, and um, until we meet again, this is DC Puba of Q Audio and Q Archives coming to you from Sleepy Senor with Doggy Bandita, guest Doggy Boom Boo, Feline Manisita, and dear lovely Katrinka. And we're wishing you and yours and all of us a grand awakening.
Thank mm-hmm. you.